Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our quick 30 minute webinar. We're going to get started right at the top of the hour. We have a lot to cover today. My name is Phil Corbin, Marketing Director here at Verify. I'm here today with Dan Schmidt and Victor Verba, our superstar systems engineers. And in today's webinar, we're going to cover Cisco CDR cradle to grave reporting. We're going to start off with a quick overview of our company, what we do. We'll then jump into a live demo to show you an in depth view of our CDR cradle to grave reporting. You're going to see how to track complete call flows for each call in a single report. We'll show you how to view the cradle to grave sequence showing related calls before and after within the same time period searched. We'll also show you how to identify sequence events like transferred, forwarded, and conference call. We're going to pause for Q&A, get some of your questions answered. During the demo, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel at the bottom right of the screen, make sure to notify the host and panelists. Again, there's a chat box and then there's a Q&A box. Make sure you use the Q&A box and we'll get your questions answered throughout the call. After Q&A, we'll reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to the end of the webinar to see what you may have won. All right, quick overview of us. Verify, we are the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaborations. Uh, we provide industry leading CDR reporting and analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control, change management. But today we are focusing on CDR specific cradle to grave reporting. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can most definitely take them offline and get those answered. A uh, lot to cover today. So let's take a look at cradle to grave reporting in action. We have Vic also known as CDR Jesus here to show us the way. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Phil. And uh, I want to sure. thank everybody for attending. Uh, give me one moment. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen out here. All right. Uh, hey, guys. So the purpose of today's session is to review our Cradle to Grave, grave reporting. So what we're going to do is kind of just do somewhat of a high-level overview of Cradle to Grave reporting, how to answer some of those most basic questions on Cradle to Grave, you know, how are these calls coming in, you know, what's happening with them once they come in, transfers, forwards, and things of that nature. So the first thing I'm going to do and where I'm going to spend most of my time today is going to be in our history search. Um, history search is kind of where we go for a quick search information. I need to know, you know, what happened with this phone number, what happened with that phone number, you know, calls came into this extension and things of that nature. Um, so from our history search, we can build reports and save those in reports repositories so they could be uh, saved, run for schedules, run ad hoc and things of that nature. So popping back to our, our history search, let's talk a little bit about Cradle to Grave. So what Cradle to Grave is going to allow us to do is allow it's going to take our it's going to allow us to enter a single search, but show us all the things that we didn't know about that call. So you know the perfect example that I hear all the time is hey you know what we had a customer call in they complained they got bounced all over the place and then maybe they got hung up on. Well you know that's great information to have but you need to know who did they talk to where did they get hung up on did they get hung up on things like that. So first thing we're going to go ahead and do is kind of address the most simple scenario. And that's just exactly what I said. Let's say, for example, I had a caller that called and they spoke with the manager and said they just had an awful experience. Um, they were able to speak with somebody. They gave you a name. Maybe they gave you an extension. But, you know, we need to know what exactly happened with that call. And that's a little bit of where Cradle to Grave is going to come in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mimic that scenario. So let's say, for example, right here, I have a caller. Um, I know their call, their telephone number. Um, they called in. They said they had a terrible experience. They spoke with somebody by the name of Katie um, who, you know, maybe at the end of the call was great, but just getting over the Katie was an absolute nightmare. So the first thing we can do is we can come in, we can punch in their phone number, we could bring up all of the results based off of their phone number. We're going to set our times and dates up at the top over here, and you know maybe I know that they called in on the second, so we're going to go ahead and just pick on the date the second, and we're going to show all calls to or from that phone number. That's great. Now I can see all some touch points and things of that nature, but it doesn't give me the complete picture. Um, this is not really tying everything together. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I know that they spoke with Katie. So, you know, let me see all the calls that may have gone to Katie over here. So we're going to go ahead and pop in Katie's extension. And again, we're going to do a search. Excellent. So now we have Katie's extension. We've got a search, but we're getting a lot more information than we wanted. Now we're seeing all of Katie's calls. So I could come up here. 
and I can match all this criteria, now we're going to focus in on just this one call. Fantastic, because now what I'm looking at is this call that I know that took place that went to Katie over here. But that's nice information. I could see that they spoke with Katie for about five minutes and 19 seconds, but it doesn't address the problem at hand. All of the things that happened that you're not seeing here. In other words, who did this customer talk to? Did they come into my voicemail? Did they not come through voicemail? Did they call in directly? Um, and that's where Cradle to Grave is going to come in. So the Verify perspective, we make it very simple. So once I export these results, I'm just going to go ahead and pop down to my Cradle to Grave scenario, and I'm just going to say, you know what, I want to see Cradle to Grave. So I'm going to toggle that guy on. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is a personal preference, I'm going to change my delivery format. We can email directly from here. We can also FTP a, for, uh, a report, but I just want to download it because I need some quick information on this call. I'm also going to change my report output. Um, this is just a preference. I prefer the HTML format in a report anytime I'm running detail. Reason being is when you have detail, you have a tendency to have a lot of columns. And if you do things in like PDF, it has a tendency to wrap, and it could get a little bit harder to follow. Um, CSV and Excel are great for being able to show all columns, um, but I have a personal preference of HTML. So all I did in this guy is really I just toggled Cradle to Grave on, and I chose my format, and I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a, a run. So keep in mind what we searched here was just this caller coming into this extension right here. So when I run my report, it's going to give me general information. I'm going to show the one call, the average time. But again, keep in mind, all I'm searching in for this leg right here. However, when I turn on Cradle to Grave, I get to see so much more. So I'm not just showing the one call that went to Katie, which is great information. I like to know what Katie's doing over here. But what I'm showing is what happened outside of that call. So in this particular instance, let's say, for example, this was a complaint or somebody had called in and said they just had a bad experience. Now by turning on Cradle to Grave, I get to see exactly what that caller went through as they flowed into my system, who they talked to before they got to Katie, how those calls were transferred and field, who actually disconnected that call. All that information I'm able to pull just by toggling on Cradle to Grave. So one of the things you're going to notice right off the bat is I've got one sequence here. So a sequence of events is the entire thing that matches my search. In other words, the entire sequence of events that match my search. Now, you'll also notice that at my search down here, I have this call in orange. So this is the one that actually matches my search criteria. So I can see the caller ID, I can see the extension, and there's our friend Katie. Now, what we're also able to see is exactly who that customer talked to beforehand. And if Katie continued to transfer this call to somebody else, we would continue to show that compounded uh, call record as it goes through your phone system. So let's take a look at this example. I can see that this caller came in. Um, in my case, I know this is just a general CTI route point that routes over to Unity. So from Unity, they hit an option, which in this, in, in this individual scenario here, this option, whatever they hit, actually routes them into my UCCX. So keep in mind, one of the nice things about this cradle to grave and looking at things from the call manager perspective and not just a call center perspective, is that I'm actually able to see some of those UCCX type criteria um, as well as being able to see things outside of UCCX. So you're actually getting a very good picture of not just what happened in call manager, but you can see some, uh, some interesting metrics on how your agents as far as a call center are handling calls as well. So in this case, I could see the call routes into my UCCX trigger. They spend some time in a queue, about nine seconds. Um, and in that case, the call gets answered by Bobby. I can see that Bobby has about a one minute and 32 con second conversation with this person. Um, Bobby's in our rentals department. But then I also get to see that Bobby transferred this call off. So after his conversation, he found that, you know, this person may have hit the wrong option and then they're in the wrong location. So he transfers it off. So another great example here, and something that we always like with our customer service, because it does produce good customer service, is rather than Bobby just taking this call and blind transferring it off to somebody in a different department, Bobby actually does a warm handoff. So we can see that Bobby actually places a call, talks to Katie for about 14 seconds, and says, hey, I have this customer on the line for you. You know, Are you available to take the call? Katie says yes. We're able to see that the call was then transferred. And we can see that Katie then has a five minute and 19 conversation, second conversation with our original caller. So the nice thing about this is just by searching a single entity, maybe it's just extension, maybe it's just a phone number, I'm actually able to show you how all those calls are being handled, how we wrap all that information up for you, um, and really a nice package to be able to show the entire sequence of events in the order in which they happened. 
So this is just really one basic scenario. And one of the very common ones that we see is, you know, hey, this phone number called in. I need to see what happened with this call. This is a very quick way to be able to run that report on just a phone number or just extension and really see the entire sequence of events, determine how people are handling the calls, determine if we're doing warm handoffs or if we're doing cold handoffs and just passing people over to other individuals. Um, one of the things I had mentioned is we're also able to really determine who disconnected that call. So a great example of this and using that cradle to grave, as well as some of the additional options like cause codes, we're actually able to show for that caller that comes in and calls in and says, hey, you know what, I talked to a bunch of people, I don't remember who they were, but I got hung up on. Um, being able to look at these cause codes here is going to also help us determine who hung up the call. So anytime I see something in a cause code like a normal call clearing, that means whoever the normal call clearing terminated on, either the originator or the terminator, actually disconnected that call. So in this example, I can see that the originator of the call had a normal call clearing. So I know that my originator or the person calling in disconnected that call. It's a great way to be able to say, hey, do I have my agents disconnecting on people? Or you know what, maybe this caller just was confused and they actually hung up the call. So this is one general scenario, something that we see a lot. And again, very easy to go ahead and produce just by plugging in a simple search for a phone number or an extension, exporting your results, turning on cradle to grave, and running the report. And you'll be able to see all of that criteria. So one of the other most common reasons that we see a lot of cradle to grave activity is hunt groups. Everybody's got them, whether you're using a UCCX, a UCCE, some other type of call center, there's usually some type of hunt group involved. So the next example I'm going to go ahead and go through is an example of running some cradle to grave on a hunt group and be, being able to see how those calls are being translated around, how they're being transferred, um, are calls coming into my hunt group not being answered, and things of that nature. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is let's run a quick report on a hunt group. And I've got a hunt group 77280 right here. So we're going to give this guy a quick view. And again, we've got great information here. So now I get to see, hey, these are the calls coming into my hunt group. This is how they're being answered. This is how they're being handled. Great summary information to look at from the hunt group perspective. However, when you're dealing with hunt group, there's a lot of routing around and transferring around and things of that nature. So we really want to take a deeper dive into that information. So that's where Cradle to Grave comes in. Now keep in mind, with Cradle to Grave, I'm just toggling this guy on running this in HTML format, and it's going to automatically produce all those sequence of, uh, sequences of events for you. If this is something that you were trying to do with CDR, we could probably install an entire system, get you cradle to grave reporting before you actually come up with a single event. Um, so what I'm looking at here is I just exported those results. I get a great view of how many calls came into my hunt group, very easy. But I also get all the columns that I'm looking for. And then keep in mind, all of these columns here are interchangeable. This is all customized and catered to what you want to see. In my case, these are the columns that I want to see. A general manager does not have to look at all of these. Um, but what I'm popping into here is, again, now I've got the history. I've got the single search. Keep in mind, all I'm searching for is 77280. And I'm showing all the calls to 77280. Great information to be able to have. But you'll notice this column off to the right. This means I have Cradle to Grave turned on. Now, what each one of these hyperlinks goes to is a sequence of events. In other words, this call didn't just come into the hunt group and die in the hunt group. Something else happened with it. There's additional events that took place that caused it to get to these particular endpoints. So just by clicking on one of these hyperlinks, it actually brings you down to that sequence of events. So I clicked on that one, it had four sequence of events, and now I get to see exactly what happened with my hunt group. I know exactly how these calls are coming into my hunt group and what's happening with them. So just taking a look at this one right here, I can see that this caller came in. Again, they went over to my route point, went to somewhere in Unity. This is another perfect example of how we're going to handle calls and be able to show calls um, going into a UCCX or any type of call center, whether it's a CCX or a UCCE. And then I could see it's great. You know, this call pops out. Um, they talk to uh, Becky over here for about 30 seconds. Um, Becky's in my rentals department. Um, and then Becky realizes, hey, you know what? This is not a call for rentals. This is a call to maybe my maintenance group. So, and this is a perfect example because here we have Becky. She sends the call into the hunt group. So rather than being able to send the call directly over to Nikki or somebody in another uh, location, she's going to send a call into the hunt group. You can see the call getting sent over to the hunt group. And then what we see is we see the person answering it. So in this case, I can see that Nikki picked up the call off the hunt group. 
Um, she's on extension 1548, and she talked with this person for about a minute and 17 seconds. Um, I'm also able to see hunt pilot information. I'm also, again, able to see, hey, who terminated that call? If this was an example of maybe an unhappy customer, I can see in this particular case, Nikki's the one disconnected that call because Nikki is the terminating cause code of normal call clearing. I work with a lot of customers, especially in the customer service industry, where part of their motto is to you know, always try to let the ha customer hang up first. So we utilize things like this in Cradle to Grave to help determine, hey, do we have agents disconnecting the calls first more than some of the other agents? And you're able to address those. Um, but again, here we have a perfect example of calls coming into the hunt group. All of these fields can be filtered down and used, and we can develop summary values based on all of this information. So this is a great example of how calls flow, who's transferring. Um, if we scroll through here, we're going to see some additional calls, you know, very straightforward calls. Calls come into my hunt group and get answered, not necessarily routed around. Um, another perfect example right here is here I have a call that comes in. Um, they go into my Unity system. They hit an option. In other words, and this time they hit an option to go over to maintenance. Um, I can see that Nikki over here answers that call, speaks for about 24 seconds, and she then transfers that call to somebody else. So we're going to continue to compound all those results as they take place and as they flow through your system. Um, with Cradle to Grave, the nice thing about that is we're going to give you that entire picture. We're not just going to be able to, we're not just going to limit you to being able to see, you know, part of the Cradle to Grave scenario or anything of that nature. So now I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up because I had a nice example over here. So here's one that has five related calls. So we can see that this one bounced around a little bit. And the reason that I'm going to pick on this guy is because with Cradle to Grave, we also get to use some of these other fields like no answer from users and things like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on this result. It comes in through the standard method. I can see a lot of uh, transferring around. I can see that, again, another call comes into my rentals department. Um, they speak with Devin over here for about 18 seconds. Um, Devin then takes that call and he transfers back into the hunt group. So this is an interesting calling scenario because now what we have is a call that's going into the hunt group, um, but we can see that there's no users available. Um, so that alerts the user. Um, other fields that we have the ability to add but also filter down on, we can see that this call is going to get redirected because there was no agent available. Um, so in other words, this is a call that came from my UCCX. They spoke with a representative. That representative, rather than giving a warm handoff and making sure that that call got answered, he transferred that call into the queue. Um, there were no agents available in the queue, and I could see that this caller went to Unity and disconnected the call in Unity. So again, just by flipping a simple switch, we're actually able to show you all that valuable information on how those calls route and how they flow through the system. So other very valuable pieces of information that we can pull out of here, um, things like how many calls are coming into my UCCX that may be getting transferred outside of my UCCX. So a lot of very real life scenarios is, you know, we have our, we have our call center, we have options within our, our Unity system. You know, when somebody does pop out to our agents, we want them to make sure that they're getting to the right departments. So being able to one, see all the calls that maybe are coming into my rentals department and being able to get transferred somewhere else, it's important information. Maybe I need to add another option in my Unity system to be able to accommodate a maintenance department because I can see a lot of calls coming into my maintenance department. Or, you know, maybe I just need to be able to focus in on uh, my agents, where they're transferring calls, or how many calls are coming in direct and being handled directly. So all that type of valuable information is something that you can pull out of Cradle to Grave with, again, just a simple switch by exporting those results, turning on Cradle to Grave, and being able to generate that simple report. So that's as easy as it is to run Cradle to Grave. Um, so anybody that's you know looking through CDR, looking through data to try to formulate those types of things, it's not that hard. If you're looking at CDR, you're looking at data, it's complicated. Um, CDR is complicated. But being able to just run a report, flip a switch, to see that customer's journey, see what that customer goes through to get to their endpoint, how many times do they hit a UCCX, or how many times do they hit a hunt group, or you know maybe your hunt groups are set up to be able to say, hey, uh, if I come into this hunt group and I've got no agents available, um, like this particular example right here, um, what happens next? Does it go into Unity? Perhaps it routes out to a different hunt group. Um, I work with a lot of customers that will, uh, you know, a call come into a level one person. Um, if nobody's able to answer it there, then it flows down to a second level. And then if nobody answers it there, it flows down to a third level. Well, 
Nothing in Cisco is going to tell you how many times those calls are flowing to different locations. Nothing in Cisco is going to uh, show you that formulation. It's not going to show you that sequence of events. It's not going to show you what that customer went to, went through to be able to get to their end user. But that's where a product like Verify comes in, is we are able to show that type of information. And one of the next webinars that we have coming up is going to actually be our uh, advanced searchability into Cradle to Grave. Because this information is great. It's nice to be able to see. It's nice to be able to troubleshoot what those calls are going through or what those callers are going through. But it's also nice to be able to pull valuable metrics out. In other words, let's say I want to see how many calls are coming into my UCCX and then being transferred to departments outside of my call center. So with advanced Cradle to Grave searchability, we give you just that. So our next session is going to be in February 19th, and we're going to dig a little bit more into Cradle to Grave. What we touched on now is just really kind of the basics. How do you turn it on? How do you interpret some of that data as it flows through, um, as these sequence of events are taking place? But our next session, we're going to dig a little bit more into search sets. And with search sets, we're going to be able to develop even more in-depth reporting because not only can we show you the Cradle to Grave and how those calls flowed, but we're also going to be able to allow you to filter how that Cradle to Grave goes. And that's for things like, hey, you know what? I need to see how many calls come into my operators and what departments they're being transferred out to. Um, or I need to see how many calls are coming into my call center and being transferred back outside of my call center. So I want to uh, encourage everybody to attend our next session. Um, our next session is going to be February 19th. And we're going to dig a little bit more into these statistics. We're not just going to show you how to see them how to interpret them, but we're going to show you how to pull things out of these cradle-to-grave metrics to help improve your environment um, and to help to improve the way that your calls are being routed and, and things like that. Um, so with that, again, I want to thank everybody for attending, um, and I'm going to pass the ball back to Phil, and we'll answer some Q&A. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Vic. Looks like we had a few questions come through. Yep. Uh, so specific question regarding 911 call alerting. Um, yes, of course, we can alert on uh, any call that matches a specific digit pattern or those uh, cost codes that Victor had talked about. Some more coming through here. Uh, Cindy asks, uh, can you track the amount of time a call was queued in a hunt group? Uh, so I know Victor talked a little bit about hunt group. Uh, calls and the answer to that is yes, of course. Um, so Cisco has this native call queuing functionality. As calls are queued, the CDR data is logged um, with a yes or no that the call was queued and also if the call was queued, the amount of time that that call was queued. So all that data would populate, uh, uh, of course, within that cradle to grave sequence that Victor was showing. So a good way of seeing like you mentioned, that customer journey, how long did a customer possibly wait in queue before getting routed to a line group member? So yes, Cindy. Uh, another question coming in from uh, Michael. <clears throat> uh, Michael says, this is great info and I could see how it could be very useful. However, does this data get populated for calls that go across clusters? Um, so the short answer to this is unfortunately no. Um, the long answer is basically Cisco uses a unique set of identifiers um, specific to the cluster. And we use those identifiers to create these sequences. So if you have calls routing from cluster A to cluster B, you can see that activity independent to each cluster, but that sequence will not have call legs of cluster A and cluster B in, a, in the same sequence. Um, all right, Dane has a question um, wondering, can Verify summarize on calls that are transferred? Uh, yes, uh, in, in multiple ways. Uh, so we do offer the call scenario analytics, so we'll automatically give you a summary of the number of calls that were either transferred from or transferred to. Um, but regarding credit of the grave, like as Victor mentioned, an excellent way of determining um, specific call legs within the sequence. And then chapter two of this, as you mentioned on February 19th, is the ability to create uh, what we call cradle-to-grave search sets. So that's specifically honing in on call legs within a cradle-to-grave sequence to further filter out um, your results, maybe to just transfer call legs to a specific person. So, yep, that's uh, coming here in a, a few weeks in chapter two of cradle-to-grave. Any other questions?
Any questions? Going once. Uh, oh, we just got a new question from uh, Richard here. Licensing. So, uh, as far as the call analytics go, call analytics is licensed uh, in either one of two models. Uh, by device, uh, so endpoint devices, hard phones, soft phones, anything that could create a CDR record, or by end user. Um, we, by default, we go by the default licensing. Everything that you saw today comes baked in with uh, our call analytics tool. Um, so that, you know, within the reporting tool, you'll, you'll have that automatically. So the cradle to grave functionality is just a part of the call analytics feature that we have. Another uh, question that can coming in from uh, Rami. Can we see the jitter and voice quality from the phone? Um, yes, so in much of our data elements or the data fields that you choose to uh, display in your call records, we do offer all of the QOA statistics that are supplied to us. Um, not to get too technical, but you know, depending on the type of phone or type of endpoint that is making that call, some endpoints like uh, telepresence, uh, video rooms, right? don't necessarily create QoS data. Uh, Jabber from Windows PCs, right, don't necessarily create uh, that, that QoS data, but hard phone information, um, we will get that, that QoS data and you can report on that accordingly, yes. So two parts of that is you could search by those QoS uh, fields. So if you wanna see calls that have uh, at least five milliseconds of jitter, you could append that to your normal call search criteria. So to Victor's point, he was specifically searching for Katie's calls that came from an outside number. If he wanted to append a QoS search criteria to that, that's very well uh, possible on that first tab, your search criteria tab as well. And then obviously displaying those statistics within the detail. So yes, Rami, good question, thank you. Uh, another great question from Jack. Have you already set invitations to the February 19th session? Uh, so, Phil, I believe uh, that's the, your next go-to that you wanted to announce and where to go register yeah, for that, right? Yeah, if you go to verify.com and um, go to company and webinars, you'll you'll be able to see the it's the Cisco CDR Cradle to Grave um, and how that can complement UCCX. That's our second Cradle to Grave webinar on the 19th. Um, I can actually send that URL out after the webinar here. Any other questions from any of the attendees? I've actually posted the URL into the Q&A panel. Any other questions? We have a few minutes here before we wrap up. Any other questions? Again, if you think of anything after the webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to Dan, Vic, or myself, get those questions answered. And just a, a reminder, we, we hold these webinars each and every Wednesday at 11 Pacific. Um, and we just kind of go over product features, quick tips, new features, uh, refresher courses, uh, stuff like that. So check out our webinars page on the website, sign up. Any other questions? We got another one, Dan. One just came in here, question is, um, if we have two or more gateways handling the calls, how can we pull that report to find which calls came in through which gateway? Excellent question. So on every call record um, that call manager sees, that is, I wanna preface this, call manager has to see this call, um, the gateway would be identified either by the originating or terminating device name. So. Um, you can either search specifically for that call by gateway name. We also have the capability, um, if maybe you're using a SIP trunk per se, uh, you could search by originating or terminating device description. So the device name is not necessary. You may be able to find that record by the description, however it lays in call manager uh, as well. So um, hopefully that answers your question. All right. Again, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're gonna move on here. And the winner is, congratulations, Jack. Kara, you have won our Amazon $50 gift card. We'll reach out to you 
shortly after the webinar here to get your information. So thank you all for attending. Again, uh, register for the upcoming webinar on the 19th. We're gonna continue the discussion on uh, cradle to grave reporting and how that can complement UCCX. Again, that's February 19th, 11 Pacific. And we host webinars each and every Wednesday at 11 Pacific and kind of rotate the topic. So be nice. Join us for those too. So again, thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your day.